Candyman shit. Chick say the name once and get cut. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Those bars. bars. From, bars. That's the freshman freestyle. I want to say way back in 2009. What? Man, these dudes ain't for the faint of heart. I had to bring Rich Nice into the fold for this one, HB. Rich Nice. Rich Nice. Come on, nice. man. To me, both of these dudes personify everything that this culture is and what it was meant to be. You know, I've seen, I've watched these guys, especially Blue. I watched them from afar. But Mickey Fax, man, we've been doing this side by side for years. We may do it in the spirit in which we came, HB. You know, these dudes have done it DIY. They done it with some of the biggest artists, you know. They done it on their own. They've been through everything from from jail uh, to just being on the outside and working their way on the inside and have continuously been true to the art form and doing it for the love. Both of them have tremendous projects in their discography and their collaborative VP. The narrative is out now, produced entirely rich nights by the legendary iconic Knotts. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. We got Mickey Fax in blue on the line with us Let's right now. Hey. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Hey, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Blue, what up, man? What up, Sway? How you doing? Man, I'm doing good. I'm doing super good now, man. How you doing? Man, God is great, brother. God is great. Man, I, I cannot complain, man. I, I really... If I, you know, I really want to let you know, man, I, I really enjoy what you do. I really. Oh, you, man. Yeah. I, I appreciate I, I, that, Sway. That's love, man. You know, you're the boss. So coming from you, man, that means a lot. Well, I'm coming as a fan, brother. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm letting you know I'm coming as a fan. And I want to say congratulations to you because you've had a long journey and you still here. Yep. Yeah. Good Vibrant. Look, good look. Yeah, edgy, rising. rising, thriving, doing it really big, man. Uh, uh, real quick, man, uh, we know Mickey. Mickey, how you doing, Mickey? You good? Mickey Fax, Mickey Fax. Mickey. Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? It's um, Mickey. Yeah. It's Mickey. Hey, y'all, Mickey got a Lamborghini. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> oh, come on, man. You hear that clue? They said I got a Lambo, man. Ain't that a Lambo I saw in the video, right? How long you've had that? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. You know, listen, man. You know, that's that's that was something just for Miami. You know, I I, I made sure my man Blue had a Ferrari, and you know, I I had the Lamborghini. You know what I'm saying? Okay, all right. Um, man, let let's talk about this. Um, Blue, for those who don't know, man, tell, wh where are you from, man? Tell us about your beginnings. How did you pick up the mic? Who who did you hear rap from, that made you pick up the I'm, mic? Huh. Well, I'm from L.A., Los Angeles, first off. And uh, actually, DMX made me want to pick up the mic. You know what I mean? Uh, Rest in peace to the legendary DMX, the great. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Divine uh -huh. master of the unknown. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And yeah, DMX got, made me want to pick up the mic. DMX made you want to pick up the mic. And so did you, you start it off... You were already in the crew before you and Blue and that, uh, you, you and Exile started working together. How did it come together? Yeah, I had many different crews I was a part of actually at the time coming up before I met Exile, and then um, I ran into Aloe Black. At a, at um, me and Aloe Black were actually on the same album and uh, oh. featured on an album called Science Project, and we met up for lunch with the group. And then uh, Aloe said, "You got to meet my DJ Exile." He's right now, he's working with Slum Village and Ghostface. And I was like, what? I got to hear this dude. And uh, he came out to a show. He enjoyed the show. He said, man, I got to get you on my next record. And we started working. And after we did our first song, we were like, man, we got to do an album. Mm. Wow. So and Blue, you was raised in a creative background too, right? Because I remember on, um, I believe, a Stay Down, you were talking about how your mom put art in your heart from the start. I think you spoke about your dad writing poetry. If I'm correct. Uh -huh. yep, yeah. Yep, definitely. Speak about their influence too. Oh yeah. My mom, she, she, she can draw really well and she can write poetry as well. And then my dad wrote poetry just to get with my mom. You know what I mean? It was just like, you know, game her <laughs> up. <laughs> player, player. You know what I mean? So I picked up those traits coming up. You know, I used to draw a lot when I was a kid. 
you know, so it, it, it transitioned. It helped me transition into like, you know, putting more into my art as an adult. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, when I think about the time when you came out, well, you, so LA, that scene was the, the barbershop crew. Um, who was out at that time when you first start, um, uh, coming into the scene, who were some of those other LA artists? Huh? Feel the agony. Feel MED. The- oh no. Planet Asia. Mm-hmm. Um, self scientific. Mm-hmm. Man, that's that's you know just some West Coast heads. You know what I mean? Self scientific. Shout out to Chase and DJ Khalil and feel the agony from the barbershop MCs. Michael Myers. Yeah. Woo! Come Michael on, Myers, man. Come on, uh, blue. Come woo! on, man. Stop playing, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, dude. I know the answers. <laughs> I'm just, uh, tell yeah. us, Sway. Come on. I'm just asking you the questions. He came up in um at a time and in a in an era of just some really dope artistry um coming out of LA continuously, you know, and, and I think I, mm-hmm. I dare say that, you know, people like Buddy, people like Kendrick, you know, all these folks are uh part of that lineage too. Right, you know, mm, and yep, yep, and um, and so let's talk about Mickey Fax, Mickey Fax, ladies and gentlemen. Mickey, are you still who are you battling this week, Mickey? I'm not now, man. I ain't doing out of that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mickey, what are you doing out here? Uh, I'm, I now nah, I'm chilling. I'm I'm chilling. I'm eating food. I'm relaxing. I'm not doing nothing. Not, nothing of the sort, man. Okay. You, you know, I I can I can legit say that I know about Mickey before the masses. I mean, I I watched the thought process, the Supras, the skinny jeans. You know, uh, uh, you know, and as an original kid of hip hop, you know, I, I got it. I knew what it was, I, I, and I co-signed that energy at that time because it was new and vibrant, and people were were trying different things. But but tell us who is the new Mickey Fax? Who is this new Mickey Fax that drives Lamborghinis and ends up in all sorts of <laughs> battles? And, and who is the new Mickey Fax? It was Diss and Royce. You don't remember that? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't recall ever doing anything like that. Um, mm. <laughs> I mean, this this new Mickey is really just someone who um, who tries to kind of uh, put you know thought to paper lyrically and 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 tries to you know initiate conversations about you know lyricism and hip hop and, and and tries to encourage people especially um my contemporaries and our older generation of of hip hop artists about um uh, financial literacy i mean i think that's who Mickey Fax is you know anything else that you guys potentially may have seen you know was 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 stuff that kind of was off the track you know that off okay. off of the initial plan you know what i'm saying and none of that stuff was planned you know what i'm saying it was more so you know things kind of got out of pocket and you know we just had to you know put put the, the cloth back into the pocket that that's all you know and 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 we're still you know moving forward trying to you know encourage positivity um and and love and light man that's that's it really that was beautiful, Mickey, but I played the, the song. I played the disc record. <laughs> Listen, selective amnesia is real. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just giving you a hard time, man. Um, you know, honestly, when I when I look, you know, Blue, we got to get you in the studio when these studios open up. I mean, Heather, Tracy, and I got to come to L.A. to get you on that mic, get you in mm-hmm. that cypher, okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a must. Um, I need to be there for that. You want to come through, Rich? Okay. Yeah, um, uh, absolutely. When I when I listen to this this project and I hear you speak, Mickey Facts, I think is right right online and and what I'm hearing in this EP. You know, there was a couple of songs that I really really appreciated. Roll Up is one of them um, that I thought was um, very signature, very timely. You know, and is really speaking on the social conditions in this country. Um, in our communities, in our minds, in our hearts, which is a very powerful song. Uh, The song Freedom, the title itself uh, really intrigued me, you know, really caught my attention. Uh, And I want to ask you about that song, Freedom. You know, what, you know, you guys talk about what freedom is in different ways. You're giving metaphors and 
and similes about freedom. But and, and I'll start with you, Blue. Freedom. This this uh well actually let me let me let me talk to Mickey about this. Freedom. What what is freedom? Like where did that song come from? And how do you see freedom? How what does freedom look like through your lens, Mickey Fax? Um, that song came from Blue, really. Um Blue again you know, Blue is, is, is probably one of the greatest poets, you know, in this generation of hip hop that we've ever seen since Common, potentially. Mm. And he sent his uh, verse in for Freedom. And I remember listening to it and I just kind of sat down. I was like, damn, man, this, this guy is, <laughs> he's doing, he's, he's doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and it was so poetic and so, um, so poignant that I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to talk about what freedom means to me in terms of, you know, being confined to what people perceive to be, you know, standard, right? Like a 9 to 5, I focused on that and being free from the labels, being free from my old job, uh being free to kind of do whatever it is that I want to do and and like to do, um and working hard for the things that I've obtained in my life, you know what I'm saying? I think that's what freedom really kind of means to me as opposed to, you know, what Blue's personal um, thought process of freedom was. I wanted to kind of give both sides of the spectrum, his side and then my side. So, Blue, can you add, can you build on that? Like where they come from? Yeah, the yeah. yeah. Um, the song, well, we just built the song Freedom. I actually heard the beat, and it sounded like freedom to me. It sounded like liberation. And uh, so I, I pinned down the verse for it and sent it to Mickey. But um, my verse was mainly about just, like, like, li- like liberating yourself, you know what I mean? And, and, and accepting freedom from, like, all different angles of life, you know, even when you're trapped in, even when you're in jail, even when you're low, like, except that freedom is there for you. You know what I mean? Like it's a medicine. Mm. Okay. I like that. You've been to jail too, right? Oh man. Too many times, man. Mm. Yeah. Too many, never again. Never again. I heard yeah. some, I heard someone recently describe, I can't think of who it was jail as a place where you could really kind of get your life in order or get your mm-hmm. mind right. Uh, would you agree with that? That's true. Yeah. It, you can, you can, but I, I also I also agree that uh, that jail is the the one place on earth. Jail and hell is the two places you don't go on earth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Only two places you don't want to go. You don't want to die, and you don't want to go to jail. Okay, we got Mickey Fax and Blue is there with us. Let's play this freedom and come back, and I'm open up the phone lines too, and let and let, and, and and I know Rich and Tracy and Heather got some questions. 888-742-3345. This is Freedom off the new project, The Narrative. Check it out, citizens. Produced by Knotts. Got to talk about Knotts. EP out now. Now, who, who else is featured on that song, Blue? Uh, Tierrano uh, Ball, Tank, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from Tank and the Bangers, and Coder the Friend. And who are they? Some dope artists, man. There, Some there artists that really came through and blessed us. And there you go. That's what I said. Simple as that. Shit. Wait. <laughs> I thought you knew that. You know, anyway. <laughs> 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 Yo, <laughs> Blue, like, why you asking me that, dog? <laughs> uh, <laughs> they the homies. They the homies. They the homies. They the homies. Uh, let me get to this phone line real quick because we got a spitter on line with us. You know, she she used to come on our bedroom bars and she used to go on Dame, Dame, uh, Dame Dallas uh instagram as well you know spitting them bars we got tz so dope on the line tz, TZ so dope hey tz yo yo what's up what's up what's up uh-huh. how you been hey man i am as well as can be i know we all still going through these crazy times but i'm here i'm able to still do what i do and i'm talking to y'all so everything good you did hey, hey, okay. hey. love it come on, come on come on we got mickey fax and blue man. here talk to him Yo, so first off, right, <laughs> that's my favorite record that y'all just played, that Freedom Drive. That's my favorite record off the project. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole project, in, in a sense, to me, is what's needed from hip-hop. Like, Sway, HB, y'all know how I come with hip-hop. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for me, when I heard it, I lost my mind. And also, I'm from Virginia. I'm from 7'5". 
I work with Notch. That's the big dog. So it was like he came crazy with production. Mm-hmm. It was an incredible project to me. Like Roll Up, like you said, is insane to me. It's one of those records where it's so truthful and so present that people can kind of get lost. Like, damn, is, is reality this right now? But mm-hmm. it was so honest and like so well crafted. Yeah, just a dope project overall, man. Like I'm happy to listen to it. It like it inspired me as an artist. It inspired me to go pick up my pen and like let my shit off a little bit, you know. Yeah, there you go. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. He's, you fellas, you used to so compliments. Up. Are y'all used to compliments? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That sounds wonderful. That's what's up. Very appreciative. Very appreciative of that, uh, Queen. Much love. Can, oh, can for I... sure, for sure. Like, keep doing what y'all do, because hip-hop needs it. Like, the, it's crazy how it all comes back around, you know what I mean? And what y'all are giving is, like, really what these youngest need. And for the people who've been here, it's like, yeah, like, this is what hip-hop is. So just just keep repping hip-hop. That's all I ask. That's that's what we need, you dig? There you go. Word up. up. Hey, 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 TZ, why don't you DM Mickey Fax, man, and, and, and man, y'all, it'd be dope if y'all all collaborated. You blew hey, Mickey Fax. Hey, real. Mm-hmm. Come on. I will ASAP. Like I said, I work with Nas. You, the Future's Female's coming out soon, so I'm I'm on that Ooh. thing. So it would be really nice. dope to, like, collaborate with y'all on some on some real, you know what I mean? I'm in Norfolk, you know what I mean? So that that would be dope. That would be real dope. That's what's up, TZ. Oh, that's love. Yeah, for sure. TZ so dope. TZ yeah, so dope. Y'all. I'll shoot yep, y'all yep. both a DM right now. You love Ace. Love Blake. Love, you too, love Tracy. Tracy, we haven't gotten engaged yet. I'm looking oh, forward okay. to it, love. Okay, damn, she's our line went out. Yeah, she's a VIC. Oh, no. VIC. Really? <laughs> oh, go ahead, Tracy. Yeah, I was going to jump in because it hit me that it's like 12 years since the both of y'all were um, – chosen for a double xl's freshman class and we've seen the music industry has changed so much since then i'm wondering if you guys were just starting out right now how important that cover would be to you guys would that be something that you would still be striving to obtain like where does the double xl freshman cover you feel like have its place right now um i think um you know i think the cover still relevant to this day it's just not relevant to the people who get older um you know i think Mm -hmm. um i liken this to to like when i used to listen to dmx as a kid and my mother would be like why are you barking that's not real music what are you what are you barking for and i think if she was to see that source cover with dmx on the cover she would probably say the exact same thing um i think maybe there might be a ba- I wouldn't say a barrier, but it might be just a separation in terms of errors mm-hmm. and what we grew up on and what we appreciate. And sometimes that language barrier um, creates a divide between, it creates a divide and in, in sometimes a little bit of ageism. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, in 2015, when I went up to Sway, you know, we, we spoke about, you know, how, you know, when I was coming up, there were people that was they didn't get what I was trying to do with the skinny jeans and the supers and the, and the clothing and the song every week, it was against the norm. Right. And then after a while, everybody was like, well, he did it. Let's do what he did and do it a little bit better and, and, and improvise on that. So, you know, I, I liken it to that. I think, I think there's still kids that are still striving for that cover. And, you know, that's, I think that's a great thing, you know, mm-hmm. you know, whether, whether, whether the, whether it, it, it upgrades or downgrades, there's still people that look to it that want to be on there. So I'm just grateful that, you know, we were, you know, able to be privileged enough to be on, on that cover together and, and with the other eight people that were on it. Word. Okay. That's that's what I'm Go ahead, Blue. No, I was just adding on definitely. It's like a trophy, you know what I mean? It's still, it's still like everybody's after that trophy, you know what I mean? That are, that can, that are, um, everybody's after that trophy, you know what I'm saying? That the, the age limit that is, that is given to not age limit, but the, uh, the limit, you know, how you have to be a freshman, mm-hmm. you know, all the freshmen are after that, you know, and I, and I think that's really dope, you know what I mean? Same. I like it. 
uh, Bizzle, you got you want to say anything to these? Um, I do. What's up, y'all? Let's have the how y'all doing? Um, as as both now you guys have mentioned X, and it, it's crazy because I'm going back to like ninety seven, ninety eight when he like first came out on the like the commercial side of it, if you will. He had been freestyling, people knew who he was and whatnot. But what was it about him? That because there was a lot of competition during that time, but what was it about him that was so inspirational to both of y'all? It's like, yo, that's my favorite. That's the one who I'm gravitating the most to. For me, it was my pops was in a Tupac, and I felt like DMX was the new Tupac. Mm. So I, for me, it was like a, a way to relate to my pops. I was like, mm-hmm. yo, this is, you know what I mean? This is it right here. And he right. was like, I don't know. Tupac's still the man. I was like, I I don't know. (laughs) I think DMX is the man. But yeah. Yeah. For me, um, I remember um, going Kingdom and and Foster Projects in Harlem. Mm -hmm. They, you know, every summer, every summer, you know, they have their their basketball tournaments. Right. And I would never forget. I would never forget walking. To Kingdom, it was 1997, maybe 1996, mm-hmm. and the, the Clue tape had just dropped, and it was DMX and the Locks, mm. and that freestyle came on over the Get At Me Dog beat, mm-hmm. and DMX was the first one to rap, and there was something about his voice and his energy that stopped me dead in my chair because I knew who the Locks were. I was listening to the right. Locks; they had this stuff with Biggie. It was you know, they was doing a freestyles. I never heard of DMX. And I'm hearing this, and I'm just like, who is this guy barking <laughs> with this gravelly voice? And he just he just sounds like he, he didn't, like the closest that I could compare him to without comparing him to anybody, you know, from an audio standpoint was, was Onyx, right? But Onyx were like mm. yelling at you, you know, because, you know, MOP had deep voices and they were yelling. And Onyx had like a little bit of lighter voices, but they were like, violent but he, he, you know x was like he was he it was a controlled aggression and it was God, so yeah. it was so powerful and i i it, it stopped me dead in my tracks i became a fan that exact moment in 1997 crazy <laughs> mm, man thanks for sharing that thanks man. for sharing that for yeah. real yeah i love that we got rashawn on the line um blue is with us mickey fax is here the narrative it's a new ep i'm pushing it citizens because i want y'all to stream that thing stream it great music rashawn yeah. what's up hey rashawn Yo, what's going on good morning everybody good morning what, what up grand hey. rises Hey, um, I just wanted to show love to, to Mickey and Blue, man. Um, I've been a fan of Mickey for Mickey and Blue for years, ever since they they first dropped. Uh, Mick, favorite project, man, will always be uh, Dark uh, Dark Phoenix Alpha, man. Amazing project. Tr- truly changed my life as far as you being able to open, open up and express your feelings, man. Amazing. Um, Blue, man, you... You got me back on to hip hop, man. When I thought around the time when I thought hip hop was kind of losing its stride, when I heard "Below the Heavens," man, you just you just kind of you just took off. It was like a rocket ship from there, man. So I want to pre. I just want to show you guys some love. And, um, ooh, sorry. Appreciate that. That's love, yeah, I just want to show you guys some love, man, and tell you guys to keep doing y'all thing, man. I've been fans of y'all for me for years, even before the XXL cover dropped. So. Y'all just keep doing y'all thing, man. Much love. That's dope. Oh, man, that's love. Thank right you. Wow, Rashawn, I can hear you really, you really feel these guys. So he went back to Below the Heavens. That's 2007. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so this man, been, this man been rocking with you for 14 years. <laughs> that's that's, what's up. Wow. that's, that's love right there. Come on, man. Hey, Blue, people ain't around in this game for 14 years. Y'all, this is the NFL. <laughs> well, the average player lasts three years or something, whatever that low number is. You know, people ain't around this. Yeah, you know, so 14 years. Rashawn, uh, you're, you're a VIC, Rashawn. That's what you doing, Ed. I speak to that. I want y'all to take that lightly. You know? You're, no, you're, I hear that. Yeah, don't take that lightly, man, that, you, that you're here. You continue to be here in your passion. Rich Nice can speak to that. Rich, you've been here at least 14 years. 
I got sneakers 14 years old, so I'm proud of that. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's cheap. <laughs> For real. Uh, uh, let me ask you guys, what was the thought process like behind this project? Like, did you discuss the directions and the themes first, or did you pick the beats first Did not say, here's the tracks and, and figure it out? Blue, did you have to tell Mickey, don't diss anybody on this project? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, I mean, I could start off. I mean, um, well, first, we were on tour when we came up you know, with the idea to do the project. And then, um, you know, we, we had to find a producer and we, 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 we figured out that Max would be the perfect guy to do it. And, you know, Max makes... 600, 700 beats a year. So, mm. you know, he was he just sent over like, I think not sent over like 20 beats. And, you know, if you don't know, you know, I, I can't speak for Blue, but when I when I work with not, if you don't find those beats that you like in those 20 beats, then his next response is go on my Instagram and pick something. Um, <laughs> so and I think we picked maybe two or three beats from the email, maybe two. And then, you know, me and Blue, you know, just we just kind of agreed on which beats we liked from his Instagram. And then we just kind of split the, the song duties down the middle, um, not purposely. It just kind of happened that way where he took the reins on three songs and I took the reins on three songs. Okay. All right. Uh, do y'all yeah, ever... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do y'all ever go, ah, Blue, I'm not feeling that verse. Do y'all ever question each other as MCs? Mm-hmm. Nah, not really. I think we all came with it. Everybody on the project I, I, came I, I, with I, I it. Did, you know what I mean? I think I did it once, just one time with Blue. I think I did one time. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I had a girl song on there. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, he had a girl song on there. I was like, ah, I don't know. it was off of a Michael Jackson sample, I think it was. <laughs> and I was just like, nah, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think it'll clear. And then I, I was like, I don't think it'll clear. And then I, thought, I was like, I don't think it'll fit the sound of what we were going for. Mm-hmm. I think that was the only time. That's good, man. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I, I appreciate the project. I appreciate you two, um, just as individuals and artists and what you stand for. Uh, Mickey, you and I have been doing a lot together as of late, you know, with Abanime and some of the things we've been doing in that, in that world. Um, in the nerd core world, if you will, um, that I'm just really embracing. We got some other things coming up, but man, you guys, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you in person. Um, Blue uh, and Mickey, of course. Um, I really like. Yeah, yeah. I think y'all brought the best out of Asher Roth. Mm. You know, like you, you, nice, you, nice. You, yeah, I think you got Asher. I, I haven't heard from Asher in a long time, but when he jumped on that rain track. I, before I even knew it was him on it, I listened to the track. I was like, who's this dude? You know, and then when I saw who it was, I was like, oh, that's Asher Roth? You know, um, how did he come into the play? How did he come into play? Um, you want to take over that one, Blue? No, go ahead, Mickey. Um, We had some, you know, I, I had some high aspirations for, for, for Rain. You know, initially, you know, we wanted Buster and Common. And um, I think even like King Los or something like that. But everybody's schedule was crazy. Buster was finishing his album. Uh, Common was filming the movie, and, and Los was working on his project. So, um, you know, we we uh, we just had our two verses on there, me and me and Blue. And and then I was like, Yo, I think I think Blue was like, Hey man, what about Asher? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Um. I was like, yeah, I would love to get with Asher. I've been trying to get him get in contact with him for the longest. Um, and we, you know, it just so happens that, you know, obviously Knotts and Asher have a, a very good rapport due to, you know, them working on a project together. And, you know, me finally speaking to Asher after maybe, I want to say, nine, ten years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we having a conversation and he was like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll definitely do the record if you could do my record, Mickey. And I was like, oh, absolutely. You know, so I'm on his project, Greenhouse Effect Volume 3. Um, and he laced us, man. He laced us with a with a crazy verse. I remember getting it, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I sent it to, 
I sent it to Blue, and Blue hit me back like, damn. <laughs> I had to change my verse. I changed my verse after I got Asher's verse. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, well, I, yeah, I, yeah, I was like, what? Yeah. Asher blazed that one. Yeah, he, he going, uh, can can you explain some of the stuff he, when he was speaking about the NFL, uh, did the deal with Jay, but it didn't, basically he said, I mean, that, that happened, but that didn't stop anything. You know, that's how I interpret it. Like, even though that NFL deal happened, the social unrest still increased, you know, the brutality and those sort of things. Is that is that what he meant in that verse? Is that how y'all took it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's what he was talking about on top of, you know, what was going down in, in Gaza. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he just kind of, he incorporated everything into that verse. But he was definitely, you know, talking, every how you interpreted it was how I interpreted it in terms of, you know, what Jay was doing with the NFL. Mm-hmm. And the, the irony of it all, Rich um, and Tracy and, and Heather, is that when Asher is spitting these bars, you got to close your eyes because when you turn, when you open your eyes, it looks like he's about to go, you know, pick daisies on the side of a prairie or something, you know, like the <laughs> outfit he's wearing. <laughs> these are like some, some really sharp bars this man is kicking, man. But, right. Um, <laughs> you guys did your thing. Um, I'm glad we had a chance to talk with you this morning. Looking forward to seeing you in person. Mickey Facts, you already know. You family. Blue, you family too. In case you didn't know, you family too, Blue. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. So I good looks, man. Uh, that's all good. <laughs> Tell Exile I said what up too, family. I appreciate y'all and what y'all doing. We in your corner, okay? Citizens, get the EP, yep, the, yep. the narrative. Shout, shout out to Knotts. Rich, real quick, just some of the – from Busta Rhymes to Rod Digger to 50 Cent, some of the things that Knotts has done. Why, what makes oh, him man. special? I mean, even even without the artist, to be honest, Knotts' approach to hip-hop is just very um, organic and, and full foundation mm. of, of what you want from a hip-hop beat, that nod, that knock, and, and he thinks outside the box. He's not going to give you the typical things. I think that's why he said, if you didn't hear nothing on this 20, go to my Instagram. Because he makes so much beats. And it, this isn't new. He did that back when he was sending me tracks for Nas. It's the same scenario. He he has not changed. Nas has always been official with them beats. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, that's indeed. Real. Salute to the icon. Gentlemen, thank you, man. Have a beautiful day. We're going to play this song, Rain. And we'll be right back. Rich Nice, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Love All you, right. Rich. Hey, hey Blue. Blue. Blue, if they want to reach you on social, how can they reach you, Blue? Her fave color. Her fave color or Blue, her fave color on IG. Okay. Her fave color. What a Mickey Fax? Yeah, um, Mickey Fax, M-I-C-K-E-Y-F-A-C-T-Z on Twitter and M-I-C-K-E-Y dot F-A-C-T-Z on Instagram. Go okay. follow me, y'all. Much love. I res- respond to all DMs and, and responses. There you go, man. You guys have a great week. And, and uh, here it is. Rain. Sway in the morning. Shave 4-5. Here you go, boy.